Okay, case two. It is a 50-year-old male with a 15 centimeter, that's 1,5, 15 centimeter retroperitoneal mass. Um, looking at this tumor here, it looks like mature fat mostly, kind of like you'd see in a lipoma, but there's a lot of extra stuff. There's pink in between the adipocytes, and you'll notice that the adipocytes, even from low power, they have a variable size. You can see that you've got uh, big, large ones, and you've got kind of some medium-sized ones, and then little, tiny, smaller ones. So there's variable size, and then intervening between the adipocytes is abundant pink collagen. Sometimes it's kind of strands like this. Other times it can be really homogenous and very sclerotic and packed together. And then you're already probably noticing, what are these guys? Big, hyperchromatic, atypical pleomorphism scattered around in the midst of this. And so what I've just described for you is the characteristic, the, the characteristic triad that you want to see in well-differentiated liposarcoma, also known as atypical lipomatous tumor, depending on where it occurs. In this case, we have a retroperitoneal mass. We call it well-diff liposarc. If it's in the extremity, like in the deep muscle of the thigh, which is probably the most common place that I see it, or if it's in like the superficial soft tissues on the outside of the trunk, which you have to make sure with imaging that it's, that it's not internal, then you'd call it atypical lipomatous tumor. And if it's in the groin, like right around the paratesticular region, we call it well-diff liposarcoma in that location. So why the different names if the tumor is otherwise the same? Well, the difference is that these behave differently. If they're in the retroperitoneum or the inguinal canal area, paratesticular region, they often recur again and again because it's very difficult to eradicate them surgically. Whereas if they're in the extremities, they have a much better prognosis and they can usually be removed with negative margins and have a lower risk of recurrence and a very small risk of dedifferentiation into high-grade DDIF liposarc, where in the retroperitoneum, that risk is much higher. So um, again, what I've described for you is the classic features, um, and not every case, though, is going to follow this pattern. This is a really nice, very uh, characteristic example of well-differentiated liposarcoma slash atypical lipomatous tumor. But in some cases, you can have ones that are much more lipoma-like and composed of mature fat with very little of this sclerotic collagen, these collagen or fibrous bands. You can sometimes have very little of that. Also, sometimes the atypia can be very focal or even in rare cases can be completely lacking. So if I see a tumor that looks like a lipoma, but is really large, like bigger than 10 centimeters, I tend to usually like to do MDM2 fish. So the characteristic molecular finding in well-diff liposarc atypical lipomatous tumor is amplification of the MDM2 gene, as well as other genes that live in that same region on the long arm of chromosome 12. So that's MDM2, CDK4, and, and a handful of others. But the most common one that I usually test for is MDM2 because that's the, the fish that I have available. Now there are immunostains for MDM2 and CDK4. I just find them uh, more challenging to interpret, but I know some really great soft tissue pathologists who like them. And um, some people use them as a screen that if they're negative, then that's a good sign that it's not a uh, well-diff liposarcoma. If they're positive, then you can proceed to fish to help confirm it. In a case like this, uh, the clinical history of a large mass in the retroperitoneum and the microscopic findings are just classic. And I personally would sign this case out. And in fact, I think I did sign this out on on H&E alone with no special stains, no fish or anything. So in any case, um, you do of course, as always have to make sure that it all makes sense. Now, one thing you may notice I did not talk to you about yet is lipoblasts. And that's because lipoblasts, although they may be seen in well diff liposarcoma, they are not required for the diagnosis. If you have this, the features I just showed you, that's the characteristic feature, the big atypical pleomorphic cells. That's the key cell that you want to find to point you towards well diff liposarcoma, these hyperchromatic guys here. Um, there are, right there, are scattered lipoblasts in this case. You can't really see a pleomorphic nucleus very well. It's kind of crunched on the side, but you can definitely see vacuolated, multi, multi vacuolated clear lipid filled vacuoles in the cytoplasm. So some cases will have uh, lipoblasts. They can be scattered or they can even be abundant, but other cases, will totally lack lipoblasts, and that's absolutely fine. There's some more little bubbly lipoblasts for you there. Not nearly as pleomorphic in this case as you might see in some tumors. There's a couple other vacuolated cells there. 
but you um, you do not have to have them for the diagnosis. Now I have a whole long video all about liposarcoma 101 that goes into great detail about all the variants of this tumor, well diff liposarc, and also other liposarcomas like myxoid liposarcoma and pleomorphic liposarcoma. There's some nice lipoblasts. I mean, everyone likes finding a lipoblast. It's very satisfying to find them, and you're and they're they're pretty intriguing to look at visually. Let me get a better view for you. But the um, but the, just remember that they're not required. I've seen people send in a case of uh, where they think it's a well diff liposarc, and they've got dots all over like 20 different slides on this huge mass, and they're dotting little bubbly cells that they're like, could this be a lipoblast? And right there, all over, are these big hyperchromatic pleomorphic cells, which again, those are the, that's the hallmark cell. That's the cell that that is the classic cell that I'm looking for to make a diagnosis these hyperchromatic guys here. And something that Dr. Weiss taught me in fellowship, she said, you know, the, the they're so densely hyperchromatic that when you try to focus up and down, you really, the chromatin's so dense that you can't see through them. And I find that pretty helpful. There's sometimes exceptions, like that one has kind of pale chromatin right there with the, the two uh, nu uh, nucleoli. But a lot of times I do find they have this very smudgy, dark hyperchromasia. And why that's helpful is that in some cases, fatty tumors can have uh, fat necrosis. Both benign and malignant fatty tumors can have pockets of fat necrosis, and the histiocytes in pockets of fat necrosis sometimes overlap, and their nuclei can mimic the hyperchromatic cell of well differentiated liposarcoma. And I saw an area early. Let me go back and look for it. Oh, and I will point out also before I I'll, before I go on is look at this how dense and sclerotic that collagen is. That's real characteristic of the fibrous bands that you see in well-differentiated liposarcoma, atypical lipomatous tumor. There's more of the hyperchromatic cells in the background. And the hyperchromatic cells do tend to like kind of hang out by the blood vessels. So if you're if you're looking at a fatty tumor and you're seeing some sclerotic stuff but can't find atypia and it's a large mass and you're, you're worried about it from the clinical perspective, then go hunt around the blood vessels and see if you can find any of the hyperchromasia in the collagen-rich areas right around uh, the vasculature of the tumor. That can be a helpful a helpful hint sometimes. Another another tip that I uh, gratuitously stole from my wonderful mentor, Sharon Weiss. So, uh, oh, there's another lipoblast. Sorry, I really am interested in liposarcomas, so as you can tell, I get very distracted when I look at them, but there's a nice lipoblast there, and I am going to try to find those histiocytes. I saw them while we were scrolling around. Over. Ah, so look, right here is a little cluster of histiocytes with bubbly vacuolation, and that's just a pocket of fat necrosis. You can see that in the in regular, more or less normal subcutis that's just been traumatized or that's had a procedure done nearby. You can see it in a lipoma with fat necrosis, which is a common um, microscopic mimic of Weldiff liposarcoma. People see those histiocytes and they get worried. But right here, the characteristic cell, that's the atypia of Weldiff liposarcoma. These guys right here are just histiocytes. And look, they have relatively kind of, kind of paler chromatin. It doesn't always work. This one has a little bit of bean-shaped nucleus too, but I feel like under the microscope when you look, they usually look a little different. The histiocytes tend to have more fine, delicate chromatin. These ugly guys, uh, the pleomorphic cells of well diff liposarc tend to be more hyperchromatic, smudgy, kind of chunky, grungy looking chromatin. But if I have a hard case where I can't tell, if I'm like, there's a little atypia, am I sure? Is that enough? Then I just do FISH. And FISH is a very sensitive and specific test. FISH for MDM2, very sensitive and specific test for well-differentiated lipo liposarcoma versus uh, lipoma or other benign mature adipose tissue. Now, it can be seen in some other tumors like intimal sarcomas, cardiac uh, sarcomas inside the... the uh, chambers of the heart, also a low-grade central osteosarcoma, which is weird. Like, why do those tumors that are totally unrelated to Weldiff liposarc, why do they have MDM2 amplification? Who knows? Molecular answers some questions for us and then opens up a whole bunch of new ones that we don't have full understanding of yet. So, I, again, a very characteristic example. I know there, right there's some multinucleated. Those are histiocytes right there. That's just fat necrosis, this little pocket right here. So if I just had that, I'd say, no, that's just fat necrosis. But it does take a little practice, so I encourage you, look down below. I'll have the digital slides for these up eventually once I get them scanned. And you can spend some time studying this slide to really get a feel and tell apart the areas like that, which are fat necrosis, from the true hyperchromatic pleomorphic cells like these guys here, which are representative of well-differentiated liposarcoma. And again, MDM2 will 
help you out immensely if you have a mature fat lesion where you're not sure if you're dealing with a well diff liposarcoma or a benign mimic. Um, and again, check out that liposarcoma 101 video down below and uh, you can learn a lot more about liposarcomas. So light, well differentiated liposarcoma, aka a typical lipomatous tumor.